Welcome back to Threadwatch. Have you been keeping up? If there's one thing I love watching it's watching some elite tier YouTuber glassing the entire website just so he can get petty revenge on one guy. It's crazy how Ethan spent the last week or so reacting to every single thing Keem did online, and when he ran out of things to react to, he decided to dig up one of Muda's tweets from two weeks ago I guess, and both him and Hiller go radio silent the moment people start to notice Shady Susan going on with YouTube. Life's just full of weird coincidences. Can we start placing bets on when, if he's going to acknowledge it? I know it's only been a day, but that's already the longest break Ethan's taken from the internet since he started this whole drama. If there isn't any personal drama surrounding Hiller and Ethan, as in she had enough, packed her Susan and left, then I'm sure they'll try to ignore it for as long as possible, just like he did the first time with Gokunaru. If he addresses it, then it'll probably be during his podcast where he shows himself as the depressed clown again and that overall Keemstar is still the psychopathic bad guy. His fans will eat it up whereas everyone else will see this as a gigantic L with the way his content nukes were produced and scripted, and how involved IDUP seems to be on Twitter, I'm pretty sure Ian helped Ethan to some degree with this. I also had this suspicion when Ethan read of his apology during the first Gokunaru incident, it almost hit all the marks which would nullify a content cop deputy. So everyone must be seething right now, considering how they all threw their hat into the ring not gonna lie, I want tomato juice for what happened to my Susan memology. Sue's ops are the way of cowards. MRBTFO deserves being the forgotten meme he is today. Given all the Susan Ethan was doing, I went from both of these guys are horrible to siding with Keemstar because at least he doesn't pretend to have a moral high ground while doing extremely shady Susan like Klein is doing. I only know H3H3 from the fact that Susan actually managed to advance fair use copyright law in favor of creators. Late, possibly already replied to, but I'll say it. I don't think it is all that case law is oft made in the court of appeals. He never went to appeals, he just won, thus meaning the law at the time was apt enough to deal with whatever dispute he had. At least, that's what I can garner from this. I truly and well am skeptical of his case being enough of a landmark to significantly impact anything in the future, I am however open to being proven both wrong and exceptional on this topic by someone who actually knows what they are talking about. Sargon sliding into Keem's DMs saying, get him to say Gamergate. Keem reportedly has a new sponsor via his Twitter. As far as Ethan's eventual deflection or non-response to Gokunaru stuff. I'm betting on him using the fact Minneapolis is on fire right now to just drop some sending hugs and kisses or some other vague we must stop the violence tweet and just never talking about Gokunaru again. I can't believe Ethan had Susan start riots in Minneapolis just to cover up his YouTube drama. After Memology, the quartering is posting the edited video too, oh man, that's backfiring so bad for Ethan and YouTube, ha ha ha, this new adpocalypse is well worth it. Let me, let me break it down to you this way, and please team YouTube, please reach out to me via DM, I follow you on Twitter, I can explain it all to you there. This is a major problem with the DMCA system. Look, this guy or girl is impersonating other YouTubers and issuing copyright strikes to channels. He should fight those copyright strikes. You can test them and they have to either drop them or sue you, right? He can hit up Nick Recchietta to represent him if he doesn't want to give his info to YouTube. He's done it before. If we are bringing back the skeletons, silent robs take when? Keemstar on his upload of Gokunaru's video documentary about H3H3, aka the plunge of Ethan Klein, being deleted by YouTube. And it was replaced with plungers. Right there! The guns were all replaced with plungers! So much for Ethan trying to say he's still friends in his May 19th podcast with PewDiePie when Pewds himself states that he spits on him as equally as he would spit on King yesterday. I spit on both of them and they think it's rain, and they appreciate it, you're welcome. Ethan is Susaning so hard he is wishing he was on the SpaceX crew to cry while hidden on the dark side of the moon. 
I'm trying to wrap my head around what Ethan could have possibly said to get the Gokunaru video blacklisted like that to the point where bots look for identifying notes of the video, if not done entirely manually, to get it removed. If Keem didn't even get a strike, but Mimeology did, then YouTube upper heads are aware of what removing Keem's channel would look like once the video was taken down. It'd be a tidal wave of us hurt, the likes of which we would have never seen before. This Susan is a powder keg, and we're witnessing the fire next to it. My gut tells me that one more event of this magnitude is all that's needed before it explodes in everyone's faces. Granted, the fire is a slow burn, but it's still noticeable. That two times banned video is a double whammy, made quadruple in the face of everyone. It shows there is obvious preferential favoritism treatment on YouTube even though people started to realize this with channels like The Girl with the Van suddenly popping with 2M subs, Lily Singh, Jimmy Kimmel types. The most damning point of the video is not really about John Tron and how Ethan treats his friend even though it's disgusting enough on itself, but the more or less quickly glossed over on part where Gokunaru points out that Ethan has recruited a number of small YouTubers that all became more or less big nowadays to attack organically growing Sue's targets that have been established on the platform for years and were shadowing him. Leafy, Keemstar, Ricegum, Jake Paul, Pyrocynical etc. With these methods on YouTube, Ethan has been the one festering the era of attack pieces video that led to most of all the previous adpocalypses, showing Sue's they can also attack YouTubers the same way on Twitter and other platforms content nuke shows that content cop was probably always a filthy frank idea that Ethan also stole on how to viciously attack other YouTubers with humor, but here less ironically as a real attempt to end their careers. The coincidence of Leafy Content Cop plus Gokunaru's H3H3 video removed the same day is not a coincidence. Without Filthy Frank's creativity and ideas, without anyone to help them, iDubs and Ethan are pretty Susan on their own, not to forget that Ethan has sucked the life out of Sam Hyde's ideas for a while before meeting John Tron then Filthy Frank. And it shows for how stale and uninteresting their content have been since Frank Joji gave up that side of YouTube. They only were funny because they were succubus on Filthy Frank's genius. I think it's a whole package that show damning evidence of way too many things that you can re-chronologically re-connect and come with on your own afterwards. And that's more dangerous than the video itself. I remember it being a meme at the comment section of every podcast where Ethan would say, PewDiePie is supposed to come on today at every podcast. Felix can probably see right through Ethan and knows he just wants the views, or to interrogate him for his heated gamer moments like he did Jontron. Cold Ones managed to get him on just fine. I think it's safe to assume Felix saw the Gokunaru video, or at least watched the Jontron episode and how Ethan went on a temper tantrum about him saying Susan, yeah I wouldn't go to my friend's podcast either after that. It's embarrassing how bad corporate YouTube is these days, and how my recommended feed is all garbage. All I get shoved in my face are cringy late night boomer talk show hosts, Trevor Noah's Susanable Sue's face, ESPN sports highlights, I Susaning hate sports, Cardi B music videos, millennial vloggers who I don't give a Susan about, and these clickbaity Reddit tier pseudoscience videos with 20 plus million views like, what happens when we throw 1000 rainbow colored bouncy balls into a volcano. Not to mention live streams of Susan T musicians playing acoustic guitar. It breaks my heart to see animators and real talented artists struggle to get 1,000 views on videos that would otherwise gone viral 10 years ago. This one needs more attention. Surprised no one has made a compilation video of Zack spurging out at Keem yet, but I guess screening through 4 hours of it would be tiring. Thanks for watching, see you on the boards.